Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to cover how to do a basic oil change on a 2007 Nissan Versa. So in this Versa we've got a little four cylinder engine and it should be fairly straightforward to do. Uh, so we're going to start off by jacking up our vehicle here on the right hand side to give us a little bit of clearance and drain the oil from the engine. So just looking off to uh, from the front passenger side tire you can see that the oil pan is just situated right here and that the oil plug is plugged up with a 14 millimeter metric bolt uh, so basically what we need to do is just essentially take a wrench and take that bolt off It always helps to drain the oil when the engine has been run for a little bit of time just to thin the oil out so that it drains quicker and more thoroughly. But basically once you drain, begin draining this oil, uh, let it drain for probably, oh, I'd say you can walk away from it from a good solid 10 to 15 minutes to get every last little bit out. You can even lower the vehicle if you'd like to get a thorough drain, although probably not necessary. And uh, once that's drained, we'll replace the plug and remove the oil filter. This is a view of the oil pan drain from behind the passenger side front wheel. So now that the oil coming from the drain pan has essentially slowed down to a slow uh, little drip slash trickle, you just want to give the surface of the drain plug hole a nice clean to make sure there's no dirt and then take your drain plug here um, you can give it a quick wipe if you'd like. This one's actually pretty clean, but it's just covered in a little bit of oil. Uh, but making sure that you reinstall the plug uh, with the little sealing washer uh, right here uh, intact onto this bolt. And all you do is just basically thread back into the pan by hand as such. And then using your 14 millimeter wrench, give it a gentle tightening. I mean, because on my particular vehicle, there is a plastic uh, drain pan washer that you just kind of have it touch and then just give it a slight turn to firm it up um, you know and that's pretty much it give it a wipe to make sure that you can see later that there's no oil leaks from the pan and we'll move on to the next step of replacing the filter so the engine oil filter is actually situated right in the center of the engine um, the bottom of the dipstick here so as you can see this is the engine oil dipstick and you can't really see it here because of the lighting, but you see that little orange cylinder at the very bottom? That is the engine oil filter that we're going to remove from the bottom up. Um, I don't have a lot of clearance from under the vehicle to show you, but basically you're just going to reach in from the little cavity underneath the um, front uh, radiator support. And basically just using a uh, oil filter wrench, we're going to go and remove this oil filter. Now for those that are wondering what type of oil filter wrench that I like to use on my vehicles, it is one of these boa constrictor type wrenches uh, that consists of a long sort of rubberized band that sort of goes in between these grooves here on the handle assembly uh, with a little bit of a gripper tooth here that sort of helps you leverage um, your force against an oil filter as such. Uh, to undo it. 99% uh, of the vehicles I work on I use this. Uh, I was purchased from WAP here in Canada from Canadian Tire for about 10 bucks. I'm sure in the United States you could buy from AutoZone or Pep Boys for uh, for a similar price or maybe even cheaper but uh, it does wonders not only on oil filters but all sorts of cylinder type um, assemblies on an engine. Uh, even BMWs if you'd believe it or not uh, can benefit from this tool. So uh, let's remove that filter and replace it. So from underneath the vehicle, you can see this oil filter a little bit better. And I actually just reached up in there with my right hand and gave it a twist. And uh, believe it or not, this filter actually began to unscrew quite easily. So I think the person that changed the oil at the local uh, Mr. Lube joint didn't quite tighten this filter the way that I would be comfortable with. So when we're reinstalling the new one, we'll basically crank it down until the gasket seats and the filter stops turning and then try to give it about another quarter turn or so uh, to seat it. So this is what the replacement oil filter looks like. Um, I'm just using a standard Fram PH6607 
oil filter. Uh, and as you can tell, this thing is really tiny. Uh, it's in fact almost as tiny, if not the same size, as a uh, motorcycle filter. Uh, basically consists of, well not a whole heck of a lot, you know, here's your filter assembly with the little rubber gasket here. And uh, prior to the install, we want to rub some engine oil onto this gasket surface prior to the reinstallation of the filter so that one, uh, both mating surfaces uh, are well lubricated so that we can actually tighten this thing down properly to create a proper seal between the filter surface itself as well as the engine block. Um, some people choose to fill uh, the inside of the filter with engine oil as well. I don't bother because the oil pumps in modern cars can pretty much pressurize and fill this thing in about two, you know, two blinks of an eye sort of thing. Um, but yeah, let's proceed to lubricate this and reinstall it. So using some engine oil, I'm just going to lubricate this gasket mating surface here. So this is what it looks like when it's fully lubricated. So what engine oil I'm going to use here is a standard uh, conventional non-synthetic uh, 5W30 engine oil uh, by Quaker State. Uh, your choice of oils, uh, I think, doesn't really matter a whole heck of a lot whether you go conventional or synthetic uh, as long as you buy from a reputable brand. So to fill the engine oil, we want to open up the oil fill cap here in the crankcase and using a funnel, um, fill this crankcase with just over three and a half liters of oil. And uh, you know, once you put in about three and a half to about three and three quarters liters of oil, you want to check the oil level with the dipstick to make sure that the oil is filled properly. So I've just finished filling the engine crankcase with about 3.8 liters or so of engine oil and uh, basically replaced the engine oil cap here uh, and just tightened it snugly and uh, made sure that the engine was on a level ground, checked the oil to make sure that it was full or close to full uh, and then started up the engine to let it run at about 2000 RPM for maybe about a minute or so uh, and then after I was done that I shut off the engine and then checked the oil pan drain plug as well as the engine oil filter to make sure that there were no leaks coming out um, for those that are wondering why 2000 to 2500 RPM uh, what happens is that your engine oil pressure uh, raises dramatically from idle uh, when you're at that RPM so if there were any leaks or any bad sort of you know oil filter seals um, that didn't seep properly, uh, you would see oil begin to seep out and uh, start to leak all over the place. Uh, don't do it too long, you only really need to run it at that RPM for maybe about 30 seconds to a minute. I did mine for a full minute. Uh, shut it down and then made sure that the ground was on a level, uh, level surface and then check the engine oil uh, after about five minutes of letting the car sit. So as you, where you want to aim the engine oil level to be is basically where this upper dot is. Uh, indicating that the crankcase is in fact full. In my particular case, I actually overfilled the crankcase just a little bit, maybe up to where this H is, if you can sort of see the line, it's kind of impossible to see. But um, it comes down to that if you're slightly overfilled on this engine crankcase, uh, odds are that it's probably not going to do any detrimental harm to the motor. Um, so, you know, engine oil change intervals, you know, under typical city driving, I think for the average person, manufacturers suggest here in Canada, an oil change interval about 8,000 kilometers. Uh, or six months, whichever comes first. So hopefully you found this video informative. Stay tuned for future episodes on how to fix your own car at home. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.